and I needed some personal time. All the pictures, the mentions, I know what you did, I mean it, I'm staying in shock. So problems, so problems, so problems, so problems, so problems are solved. But my run through the money, the rest will be gone. Knock on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The thirty is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something that's why I ain't calling. Own a progression, it's all that I wanted. A flow and affection, I'm summoning it dummy. Cause I check out problems, so problems, so problems, so problems, so problems, so problems are solved. But my run through the money, the rest will be calling. Knock on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The thirty is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something that's why I ain't calling. Flow and progression, it's all that I wanted. A flow and affection, I'm summoning it dummy. Alright, cool beans. Hope you guys did enjoy that small montage. I'm Hex. I'm gonna be going over the cheese stamina warden build for the update 39 patch. Yes, it's about time we make a stamina warden build and let's make it a cheese build because a few people have been asking for it. So why not? Just to get out of the way, this build is full cheese. It does run the meta arena weapon. So if you already know what it is, don't leave a comment down below. This is not unique. You're just copying and paste. I'm giving my insight and my preferences to the build. So there you go. So for those that still want to comment, angry comments, go ahead. Not only does this build come with the meta tankiness, meta sustain, it comes with obviously the best set and forget cheese damage possible. If you're 1v1 somebody, you're going to do a lot of damage. If you're xv one in somebody, oh, rest in peace to that 1vxer. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> but how exactly we get this strong build in order, stick around to the end and I'll show you exactly how. But before we get started, get to the subscribe and like button. It really goes a long way and I greatly do appreciate it. Also support me on Patreon if you want to choose the first video of every month or support me financially. Follow me on Twitch where I hopefully will be streaming one day. Just been working a lot of three jobs right now. It's just been a nightmare. Kind of fun. And also for those that just want to see raw gameplay of the build in action, I have opened up a second channel called Hexapug2. Basically just showing my raw gameplay with very me with very little if any talking. Just showing what it was and that's it. Just raw gameplay for those that just keep complaining all you ever do is show clips, not gameplay. Well, if you want to see me kite around a rock for an hour, go ahead. It's there. But without further ado, let's shock our way into the build. All right, so first thing we do run, we do run Deep Fisher. This is basically what sets of the burst. There are some shocks, after three seconds they go off, and then they go back underground, and then six seconds after they hit off again. I didn't know this, but the resurface actually does bonus damage. So when it goes back underground and it goes up a second time off the same cast, it actually does bonus damage. So if you're trying to burst somebody, that's your best bet. But regardless whether you hit them with the first or the second hit, all that matters as long as you hit the target, you put major and minor breach on the target for 10 seconds, reducing their armor by almost 9k. That's basically almost 9k armor should we get on the target. And it's an AoE and it can hit a pin or a flag. Like it's just so absurdly strong for AoE burst. Next skill is Bird of Prey. This is a ridiculously strong skill. This is basically our snare that just happens to get major expedition and permanent minor berserk just for having a slaughter. You cast the skill, you get 30% movement speed for six seconds, and just having the skill slaughter gives you 5% damage. Just here you go for free. Next skill is Lotus Blossom. Lotus Blossom is another crack skill. Doesn't seem like it, but these are the skills that really do make or break builds. Basically, when you cast this skill, you get 12% weapon and spell crit on both bars for 60 seconds. Yes, this thing lasts for 60 seconds. And every time you do a light attack, you heal, which is tripled if you fully charge a heavy. It's just a really good skill. This basically lets us just use any pot. Now that we have crit on the build, we can run any pot on this build. Next skill is Rending Slashes. Rending Slashes is obviously a very, very strong dot. Rending Slashes is a go-to dot. It's only really good when you pair it with the arena weapon, which we do run. Don't know what it is? Stick around to the sets and I'll show you exactly what it is. 
But with the arena weapon, this thing just does absurd amount of just set and forget damage and you can apply it on multiple targets. I like this more because it initially puts hemorrhage on target, small dot reduces their max health by 10% and also reduces their movement speed so we can lock them down. You could run either morph, I just prefer this one. Next skill is Whirling Blades. I love Whirling Blades. Whirling Blades is my go-to spammable slash execute. You spam this when they're below half health and you start catching so many people off guard. And the thing about Whirling Blades, you can't roll dodge this. Cause when you Dawn Breaker somebody and they try to CC break and roll dodge, well guess what? You're gonna catch them off that roll dodge and they're gonna get, take like a 10K spin to win. Uh, honestly, you could put almost anything you want here. If you want a different skill, like uh, Cutting Dive. Uh, what's another skill? You wanna put a... Uh, the, the bugs you can put the bugs there and use running as your spammable honestly it's up to you you can really you can really honestly use either one spam i just like this just catch people off roll dodge and for ultimate obviously dawn breaker of smiting dawn breaker of smiting is the go-to best probably is the best universal ultimate in the entire game any class can use this and it does its wonders you hit ridiculously hard in a cone in front of you stuns the target for two seconds and if they're able to tail the tail of the Dawnbreaker, well that dot's for sure gonna put them down. Honestly, it's just what sets up the burst. There's a lot of damage and it stuns them, just sets up that spin to win and you're gonna catch so many people with this. And for our back bar, we do run Ice Fortress. This is basically the armor buff of Warden and thank Regine, it lasts for 30 seconds. It lasts a long time, basically gives us almost 6k armor and also gives us minor protection while it's up, which is really, really good. Next skill is Elemental Susceptibility, or most common referred to as Ellie Sus. Ellie Sus, might be wondering why are we running Ellie Sus? Because of the arena weapon attached to it. Don't know what it is, again, stick to the sets and I'll explain exactly all the arena weapons. Pre-place Major Breach on someone just in case our shocks doesn't hit, because we're not always guaranteed to hit the shocks. This is basically guaranteed that we're gonna have Major Breach on the target. Also puts Burning Chills and Cuffs on the target. And we all know what happens when you put Chilled on, on an enemy with an Ice Septic, which, which we do have. We put Minor Brittle on them, making them take 10% bonus damage from crits. All crits, your crits, your Alliance crits, the third Alliance crits, Next skill is Resolving Vigor. Obviously, this is our burst hot, heal out over five seconds, and grants us minor resolve. Next is Bull Netch. Bull Netch is basically how we get our 20% weapon of spell damage on the build, and it also gives us basically almost 200 stamina every second. And it also removes a negative effect every time it's casted and every five seconds after the initial cast, which is really strong. Pro tip for those that don't know, you can actually just keep spamming the skill for an emergency. Of, let's say you're burned out of stam, you can keep casting the skill and you'll keep healing for free, get your resources back, and every time you cast it, you remove a negative effect. Pro tip, could save your life, has saved me many times. Next is Polar Wind. Now you could run at any morph, either morph is fine. The other morph is very, very strong. That stun sets up so many burst combos for me. However, comma, Polar win for me, 1B axing or always trying to fight out number is the godsend. It legit is a godsend for me because we heal for more. This one's gonna heal way more than the other one initially. And it also puts a hot on you, which is very strong. Cause if you know me, I like to fight out number. We need all the healing we can get. And the thing about this morph, you can also heal an ally too. So you can emergency heal somebody, but either morph is fine. The other one would give you that stun, which has a delay, which could actually save, set up a burst very well. And also puts a dot around you, which is really, really strong. So honestly, up to you personally, Polar Win. If you're newer to Warden, just go Polar Win. I'll save you every time. And for ultimate, we do run Permafrost. Either morph is fine. Basically we do damage in an AOE run us and it snares them. This one, this morph just snares them longer and it always puts chilled on the target, which we actually do bonus damage with chilled. And while it's up, we do get major protection. Just an all around good ultimate. <laughs> but enough of that, for the stat sheets. All right, so for our stat sheets, we're just gonna be popping a simple tripod. All right, so max mag over 18K, max health over 38K, and our max damage is over 26.6K. This is with Death Dealers, however, this is Death Dealers. If you do wanna run the Sea Serpent's Coil, but this is more of an open world build and I prefer mobility. So our mag recov, that's fully buffed, right? Mag recov over 1800 and our stand recov is just shy of 2200. Might look a little low, but we do have a niche that basically gives us almost 200 stamina every second, which is equivalent to almost 400 stamina recov. Now our fully proc weapon and spell damage, just shy of 4600 and our spell and weapon crit is at 33.3%. We basically have a one in a third chance of critting, which is really nice. And our penetration is over 7100. That is really good. And we do have access to both major and minor breach, which is almost another 9K. So we basically have 16K armor shot on this build, which is just insane to think about. Now I resist on our back bar real quick. 
So we have spell resist over 30k and our physical resist over 29k. And our crit resist is just shy of 2100. Now for the attributes, you could honestly go any form of attributes. If you want all points in the stem, you could go all points in the stem. If you want to be a full cheese lord, you could go all points in the health if you really wanted to do. Honestly, up to you. I just have 10 in the health and 54 in the stem. Uh, you can go either way you want, to be honest. For the food, Joe's a mistral saying that purple food is perfectly fine. And for the Mundus, we do run the Thief. Obviously, if you know me, you know that I love crit. Without the Thief, we would be at 27% crit. That is not enough for me. That is very enough. A build ain't pushing 30% crit. I don't want to run it. This Mundus will push us up to 33%. But if you are having more sustain issues, you could go with the Atro if you're having more mag sustain issues or the Serpent. Or you could, if you want the most possible damage, you could go the Shadow. Maybe. And obviously, we are a Sage 3 Vampire for one simple, simple passive. Undeath. The lower health we are, the tanker we become. And for my race, I am an Imperial. In my opinion, Imperial is hands down the best open world stam race out there. You get access to tough, increase our max health by 2k, the most max health from a racial passive. Imperial metal increases your max down by 2k. But most importantly, the most defining passive of them all, Red Diamond, reduces the cost of all your abilities by 6%. All your abilities. That includes Magicka, Stamina, Health, and your ultimates cost 6% less, and your core combat skills, roll dodge, CC break, blocking, sneak, and bash all cost 6%. This is basically almost negating the fact that we're a stage three vampire, which is just insane to think about. Some great alternatives, Kajit could be really good. Kajit is almost really good on any build. Orc could be really good. Nord could be pretty good. Don't sleep on Wood Elf. Wood Elf could be pretty good. Dark Elf, you're kind of pushing it. Anything else I'd kind of stay away from. And please don't be a Red Guard. Red Guard's probably the worst race in the entire game. All right, but enough of that. Let's go over the sets now. All right, so for the monster set we do run, we do run the powerhouse that is Rocks of the Wharf. Rocks of the Wharf is a very, 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 very good monster set. Because on this build, I wanted to sustain, and I didn't want to sacrifice my five piece for that, so I went Rocks of the Warp. Being able to get over 300 Magicka, Stamina, and if you're wanting to hear a joke, Health Recovery. One of the best monsters, honestly, probably the best monster set in the entire game for sustain. Some great alternatives, you could run One Piece Baron Thurisk and One Piece Magma. Honestly, those would give you almost the same, about like 50, 60 less Magicka or Stamina Recovery, which is not really to make or break it. Or you could run the Engine Guardian. Engine Guardian is also a really, really good monster set. The only problem is it can be bashed, so you won't get the resources, but it can add that Dwemer to body block for you. So honestly, there are some good alternatives. Or obviously, if you're a madman and don't care about sustain and you run a Zerg, then obviously, Balrogs is your best bet. <laughs> so on this build, we actually do run One Piece Druid's Braid and One Piece Training. Since we do have two slots available, that's why we slot one of each. Druid's Braid gives us a line of max health, and training gives us a bigger line of max health. The reason we don't go two pieces into them is because they would give us max mag, and honestly, we don't want mag on the stand build if we can help it. And we do run a five piece static set on this build. What does static mean? Static means we run the set at all times on both bars, and that set is Dragon's Appetite. Dragon's Appetite is a very, very good set, honestly. Especially really good on Stam Sword, but I felt it was really good too on Stam Warden. Because Warden, for the most part, the healing isn't the best. It's way better than Stam Sword. I'll give you that right now. But however, it's just not as good as Templar, Nightblade, or DK healing. Their heals are just on a whole nother level. This basically lets us get some really good sustain from the three to four piece, really good sustain. Increases your damage done to bleeding targets by 225. So bleeding means when we put rending on them, they're bleeding. Increases all damage done by 225. What exactly does that mean? Anytime you do damage, so anytime a damage a dot goes off, you do 225 bonus damage. Anytime you do a light attack, 225 bonus damage. Anytime an ability goes off, 225 bonus. You see what I mean? Everything. Dots, direct damage, abilities, just insane amounts of damage. And the thing about this, it also has another five piece attached to it, which is dealing non-bleed damage to a bleeding enemy gives you a stack every half second. At 10 stacks, you heal for almost 10k health, which this can go up even higher when we have full death dealers, okay? With full death dealers, this is gonna spike up really high. Since this is a cheese build, we do run a mythic with two arena weapons. What mythic is that? On this myth build, you could run two mythics. The mythic I run is death dealers. 
Stan Warden, I can actually justify playing open world 1vx, so I run death dealers because in PvP, mobility is keen. If no one can catch up to you, no one can kill you. The reason it's really good is because it does not deprement us by stripping our mobility like sea serpents does. Sea serpents would give you the most possible damage, however you are snared into oblivion. Unfortunately, we weren't able to run market to its full potential, that's why we run death dealers, the second best bet. But obviously, if you do want to run sea serpents, you could run sea serpents. So the Reno weapons, I mean, come on. I mean, this is the cheese meta build. So the back bar we do run. The Vaishrons, perfected ice staff. Obviously non-perfected, perfectly fine. The only thing the perfected version does, it gives you 1190 offense man. That's it, which I mean, it's okay. I mean, if you're on a back bar, you're not really going offensive, so it doesn't matter too much. The main thing, when you cast weakest elements or the morph, at least us, enemies within 15 meters are tethered to you for 10 seconds and you deal damage to them every second, whether it be rotating between flame, shock, or frost damage, which increases by 1% for each target hit. Thing I didn't know about this is that you can actually hit multiple targets with the tether. So if you got two Joe Bobs, you target Joe Bob number one, and Joe Bob number two is in between both of you guys, and Joe Bob number two takes damage from the tether, that's two ticks, so your next tick's gonna do 2%, and then they both take damage again, it's gonna go to 4%, six, you see, that's how it can ramp up to 20%. So if you have like 10 people in a line, or maybe six actually, my six might be the max. So if you got six people in the line, you're gonna be able to increase it by 6% off the first take. And this thing can ramp pretty high. Obviously, this is the meta cheese build. And for the front part, obviously the master's perfected dual wield. Obviously non-perfected, perfectly fine. Preferably double maces. I like double maces on this build since we don't have battle orcs. But if you do run battle orcs, you can run anything. The only thing the perfected version does, it gives you two and a half percent crit, that's it. Whether bomb perfected or perfected, the main thing, Twin Slashes deals over 1600 bonus damage off the initial hits and every dot tick. If you didn't know this, Rending Slashes actually does di does double damage initially because you hit them with both weapons. So you double practice initially and every dot deals over 1600 bonus damage. So you're doubling your dot damage with this and it's set and forget. You can just put it on targets, just jump out of one, two, three, four, four, four. It's just, it's crazy. So the way we run it. So for the front bar, I prefer that you run double maces. If you are gonna run battle orcs, then you could run whatever you want. You could run double daggers, double axes, or even double swords. But if you aren't running battle orcs, then double maces is the best bet. On the main hand, I do have a poison enchant just to be able to proc another dot because with a dragon's appetite, it can get really out of hand. And Nurn Hone, please on the main hand, make it Nurn Hone. It makes a difference. On the off hand, we do run a flame enchant. Basically be able to proc burning, another dot on the build, and sharpen because in PvP, penetration is king. For the back bar, we do run the Vase Shrine Ice Staff, obviously. Honestly, on this one, you can run any enchant or poison you want. I just put double dot poison, just being able to just dot somebody up into oblivion and just watch their health bar just get absolutely melted. And obviously defending because tankiness is next to godliness. For the body, we do run 322. Yes, 322. Honestly, I like this way on stand builds the most. Three heavy two medium two light honestly it just works perfectly for me we do run a heavy rocks of helm heavy chest of dragon's appetite heavy shoulders of roxa a light sash and hands of dragon's appetite medium legs and feet of dragon's appetite for the traits if you can try to all the pieces and if you can't do that try to add the big pieces what i mean with that is head chest and legs and if you can't do that max dam is perfectly fine just adjust your health attributes at the end and honestly you probably wouldn't even need to on this build to be honest <laughs> and for the traits typical seal approval hex traits six and pen one reinforce he has six and pen one reinforce the only reinforce i have is a heavy chest of the dragon's appetite reinforce and the rest and pen however if you want some more heavy reinforced pieces or some well fitted go ahead that's what i like about builds we fit to our play style and for the jewelry we do run a Druid's Braid Neck, and a Ring of the Trainee, and a Death Dealer's Feet Ring, because it only comes in a ring, duh. For this build, you can honestly go any combination you want. You can go all Bloodthirsty, you could go all Infused Weapon and Spell Damage, or you could go any mixture here. I have two Bloodthirsty and one Infused, all with Weapon and Spell Damage. Honestly, they were working beautiful wonders. It's personally whatever you have available, whatever you want to run. But for those that do run around Sea Serpents, all you need to do is put sea serpents on your neck and then put your druid's braid necklace as a ring and there you go you're all set for the food simple jewels of mystery saying that purple food is perfectly fine gives us a lot of max health and recover everything 
but if you got a deep pocket or don't mind spending a little extra, Orzaka Smoke Bear Haunch gives you about 400 more max health and slight more recov. And for the pots, simple tripods. Gives you a burst of health, mag, and stamina, and recoil of every. But if you were a true baller, then you could run the minor heroism pots. Basically, where you sacrifice the, ma the health for minor heroism. However, these bad boys are a bit pricey. So just stick with tripods if you're a little strapped for cash. All right, but enough. Let's go with the CP now. We do run fighting finesse, increases our critical damage, critical healing. Focus many, increases our healing done with single target heals. We do run Ironclad, reduces the damage taken from direct damage attacks. And the last one is what I would consider your flex bar. You could run Deadly Aim to just increase the absolute damage of your Randy and your, your Dot. Or you could run Master at Arms to increase your Spin to Win, Shocks, and your Dawn Breaker. To you. Or you could even go Force of Nature. There's so many options. It's up to you, whatever you personally want. And for the red CP, typical Seal of Approval Red Hex CP. Celerity increases our movement speed by 10%. Honestly, in my opinion, the best CP in the entire game. Survival Instinct, while fit to a status effect, our core combat skills cost less. Relentless that being stunned or fear causes us to gain major protection for 3 seconds. And Pain's Refuge. The more net effects we have acting on us, the tanker we become. But if you do want a little bit more sustain, then you could swap out Relentlessness for Sustained by Suffering. And for the green CP, doesn't ever really matter. Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, Gifted Rider, and Steed's Blessing. <laughs> but alright, cool beans, that's the build. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Honestly, Stand Warning is... It's a little awkward. It's fun, but sometimes it lacks the damage. But with this build, obviously, it's the meta cheese build. You're going to be melting pugs and sweats get absolutely pressured with this build. And your survivability is amazing with this build. You just have so much set and forget damage that pugs just get absolutely melted before you can even do anything to them. And if you're in a group, oh, I hate to be the 1v extra going against your group. <laughs> it happens all the time. But as always, for those that are still sticking around to the end, hit the subscribe and like button. It really goes a long way, and I greatly do appreciate it. Also, support me on Patreon if you want to choose the first video of every month, or support me financially. Also, if you want to follow me on Twitch, I hopefully will be streaming someday. Just been busy with three jobs right now. Also, I have opened up a second channel where I just post my VODs. Hexapug 2, post VODs, just mostly just raw gameplay. Just for those that do want to see my raw gameplay, or just those, for those people that say, all you ever do is show clips for you. If you want to watch my one hour of me kiting around rock, go ahead, it's there. <laughs> but you know the rest but hope you guys did enjoy the build video like the video if you liked it comment your thoughts or experience with the build also anything i might have missed out what video I should do next subscribe for more but most importantly stay zergen